Hello, today I am going to discuss the role of the hormone prolactin in men. Now, because this will be a rather in-depth discussion, I am going to read off of a script and slides that I have prepared to make sure that I convey this information accurately to you. I'm sorry. Do not be sorry. Be better. There has been a lot of talk recently on whether or not prolactin raises after sexual activity in men and what impact that might have on an individual's potency in all regards. I have heard some people claiming that prolactin only rises after sex, but not after a nocturnal emission, or that any prolactin increase in men is transitory and therefore insignificant. I want to dispel some of these myths, as well as provide you with a general understanding of the role this hormone plays in men. If you are short on time, I will summarize right away. Prolactin is a hormone associated with breast tissue growth and milk production in mammals. Prolactin rises significantly after any orgasm in males but more so after copulation compared to masturbation. It is theorized that prolactin in males plays a role in the regulation of sexual desire and helps to orient the male towards successful child rearing. As dopamine decreases post-orgasm, prolactin increases, resulting in decreased testosterone and libido. Prolactin lowers testosterone by interfering with the secretion of gonadotropin releasing hormone. Prolactin release is definitely and significantly elevated in the initial surge immediately post orgasm in males, remaining elevated for at least 100 minutes after secretion. Effects of sexual activity on prolactin surges following the first one immediately post-orgasm in human males is currently unstudied. However, studies on rats show prolactin surges being elevated for two weeks after copulation. A study is needed to check the prolactin levels in human males past the one hour mark. But as of right now, a responsible commentator can only say that it is likely that prolactin surges are delivering an elevated dose of the hormone post-coitus for some period of time. Now, to go into further detail, you have probably seen the graph showing the inverse relationship between dopamine and prolactin after orgasm. But unfortunately, all the videos and articles sharing this graph fail to share the original source. I did quite a bit of digging and determined, however, that this graph is based on data gathered in this study on rats. Prolactin release after mating and genitosensory stimulation in females. And it seems that the original source of this graphic itself was from the book Cupid's Poisoned Arrow, From Habit to Harmony in Sexual Relationships by Marnia Robinson. This book in itself is quite interesting and I would recommend it to all of you if you haven't checked it out. Marnia Robinson happens to be the widow of Gary Wilson, who was the author of the famous NoFap book, Your Brain on Porn, as well as the speaker who delivered the famous great porn experiment TED Talk turned viral YouTube video. Studies have shown that dopamine levels modulate prolactin secretion so that elevated prolactin after orgasm is a result of lowered dopamine. Continuing on, it is important to understand why elevated prolactin is undesirable for males. 
by interfering with secretion of gonadotropin-releasing hormone. Luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone are both reduced. Downstream, this results in lower testosterone production by the testes and will also negatively impact sperm production as well. This feedback system is a useful regulatory mechanism in the female because it prevents women from premature pregnancy while they are still lactating. In unfortunate scenarios, however, high prolactin can trigger breast tissue growth in males. Hence, the use of a drug called cabergoline, a dopamine receptor agonist by bodybuilders using steroids, which increase prolactin levels indirectly. Interestingly enough, if prolactin levels are taken to the extreme, it is even possible to induce lactation in males. However, this would never occur as a result of any quantity of sexual activity, as the rise in the hormone is nowhere near enough to trigger something like that. We can see that the initial post-orgasm increase in prolactin in male test subjects is significant, potentially doubling in some individuals, and lasts for over 100 minutes. Even if the following episodic pulses of prolactin are completely returned to baseline, unlikely but not impossible, this large dose of prolactin alone is enough to have an impact on the individual's testosterone production that day. If the subject were, say, a porn addict or just the average teenage boy with access to a computer, he could be stimulating this large prolactin spike on a daily basis or even multiple times per day. This prolactin surge could be stimulated multiple times per day every day for a period spanning years, especially if these were important developmental years through puberty. It would be recklessly irresponsible for us to ignore the high likelihood that constantly spiking your prolactin levels will negatively shape what kind of man you become, both mentally and physically. There is no reason to think that prolactin is not released in a nocturnal emission as these orgasms have all the characteristics of any other as a central nervous system event resulting in ejaculation. It would be illogical to think that there will not be a fall in dopamine and rise in prolactin following a nocturnal emission. However, a study demonstrated that rise in prolactin was greater following coitus with a partner than after masturbation. This would suggest that the amount of prolactin released would be dependent on the levels of stimulus experienced, as we have already established that prolactin is regulated by dopamine. In this study, participants masturbated to an erotic film. It is understandable that a random porn clip would be less stimulating than real sex, but I wonder whether the way porn is typically consumed with a session of multiple tabs of videos specifically chosen to suit the viewer's tastes would be able to match the prolactin spike as a result of coitus or even exceed it under the right circumstances. Regardless, this study does suggest that a normal nocturnal emission would have less negative impact on the male than orgasm via porn or intercourse due to overall stimulation being lower. I want to stress that while researching this topic, I learned a lot about current theories of sexual regulation in males, and that while prolactin definitely plays a role in this system, it is by no means the only factor. Dopamine, endogenous opioid levels in the brain, and androgen receptor sensitivity are all affected by orgasm and all have effects which result in lowering the male's motivation to seek out new mates. One can theorize that this is the case to work alongside the pair bonding phenomenon in humans, to make a male more likely to protect 
and take care of a woman throughout the time she is especially vulnerable, caring, and raising a child, instead of going out to search for new mates. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to hit the like button and subscribe so that similar content can easily reach you. Thank you for watching and have a great day.